Quality is a vital component to health care. And effective use of health IT can vastly improve quality and outcomes. However, the effective use of health IT depends on many things, including process and workflow change. Uh, so I'm a family physician, uh, is my background. Before I came to ARC, uh, I was in Pennsylvania delivering babies, admitting patients to the hospital, seeing folks in my clinic. Uh, and I came to appreciate and understand that in order to be able to deliver really great health care, you really need really good information. And in order to get really good information, you need good information tools and systems. So ARC is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. It's an operating division of Health and Human Services. And uh, ARC's mission is to improve the quality of health care for all Americans. And the way we do that is by developing the best evidence about what improves quality, pulling that information together in synthesis and making it available to everybody, and creating tools for folks to be able to use to help improve their quality. Your average provider may know us best through the National Guidelines Clearinghouse or guidelines.gov. That's what I used all the time when I was in practice, uh, but there's a lot of other great resources uh, available at the agency. The, the Institute of Medicine has a great definition of healthcare quality, which breaks into six components. It says that quality healthcare is safe, timely, effective, efficient, equitable, and patient-centered. And those are the dimensions that we frequently use to define high-quality healthcare. Increasingly, payment is not going to be based on how many office visits you can squeeze into the day and how quickly you can get patients in and out. It's not going to be based on how many operations a hospital can do, regardless of the necessity or quality of those operations or safety of their operations. Increasingly, healthcare is going to be paid for so that we get the outcomes we want. There's going to be value, not just volume. So providers, there's going to be transparency. If I want to see a doctor, well, they are do knee operations. What are the complication rate for that doctor for their knee, op knee, knee surgeries? If I want to see a primary care doctor for my diabetes, of all patients with this doctor with diabetes, how many of them have their blood sugar or their lipids or their blood pressure well controlled? How do they do on flu shots for their patients? How do the patients like the experience of care? Not just you know, a popularity context, but what was the experience of care when I went into this hospital? As we have implemented uh, meaningful use in our practice, uh, we've more surrounded it as a quality issue than a electronic health record issue. Yes, we are using the electronic health record with some hard stops, some steps that you can't go to the next step without completing to meet some quality issues that are also meaningful use issues. In other words, I can't discharge a patient without measuring their core measures. And in doing so, I meet a meaningful use criteria, but I also meet some quality indicators that help us. So we as a system have not really pushed out meaningful use to our physicians. We've more pushed out, we're meeting these quality indicators, such as our diabetics. Are they getting their hemoglobin A1Cs? Are our uh, uh, cardiac patients getting a aspirin? It's sort of in the system, and yes, it is the electronic record that's queuing you, you need to do this, but it's really a quality indicator that we're trying to meet. There's lots of different ways to measure quality in healthcare. Uh, uh, a lot of people care about outcomes. We all care about outcomes because that's what really matters to us. Do we live longer? Do we suffer less? Do we get good value for, for our money? The problem with healthcare outcomes as a measure of quality is that it's hard to uh, draw that direct line between I did this and then that happened. Lots of things affect the outcomes uh, in healthcare. So uh, a next step up that you can take is to say, did the right thing happen at the right time in the right way? And that's called a process measure. So you know, we measured did Dr. White get the right lab test for a patient with this condition in a timely way. Um, it's not that ultimate end goal of the outcomes, which again we all care about, but it helps us understand um, the delivery of care and it helps us understand uh, what the right thing is and when the right thing is. There's been a lot of discussion about using data from electronic health records and other health IT sources to measure quality. We think it's a really important source of data because it's really the data about the actual care, the delivery that happened. Right now, a lot of quality measurement that happens is based on billing data. So it's based on a, a code that, that a biller ha, has, has sent in, um, which is a great first approximation. But all of those of us who provide care know it's not necessarily what actually happened in the delivery of care. 
What you've got to consider when you're looking at information from, from electronic medical records to measure quality is that it's not being captured for the purpose of measuring quality, it's being captured for the purpose of delivering care. Okay, So the kind of information that's captured may not be exactly what you need when you're trying to say out of this population of patients who should have gotten this service, Okay, how many of them got that, one, that service, and by the way, how many of them weren't supposed to get that service because it wasn't appropriate for them. So uh, use of data from electronic health records for the purposes of quality measurement is not perfect right now. It's an evolving science, it's an evolving art, uh, but we're getting better at, it, better at it over time. We continue to pay a lot of careful attention to it and develop good science about it. You can't just digitize a paper-based process. Then you're not getting any efficiency out of the electronic health record. And I think that's where a lot of the growing pains are felt now, is if people just assume that they're going to take the same paper-based process they had and now duplicate that electronically. That's not going to be the most efficient way to do it. So it's an opportunity to rethink the workflows, find efficiencies in that practice, and help every member of the team, that's a really important word, medicine's a team sport, and every member of the team does their part. And they're going to do it differently. The dance is going to be different when you have an electronic health record that can really help manage that process and have every member of the team, the front office person, the medical assistant, the nurse, the physician, and the patient do their part in a way that gets someone through the process as quickly, as efficiently, and with as much quality as possible. If you don't consider workflow, it might also become a safety issue. Um, uh, making sure that people have the information they need when they need it, not only can improve safety, but if people don't have the information they need when they need it or in a way that makes sense to them, you might be making it really hard for them to do their job and you might be causing uh, uh, challenges for the care, deli for care delivery. The ARC has some great tools for people who are implementing and adopting uh, and trying to meaningfully use health IT. Uh, on the issue of workflow in particular, we have a workflow toolkit uh, uh, specifically addressed for providers who are trying to adopt. Uh, it's created by industrial engineers, so it's people who know what they're talking about and uh, it's a really great resource. What we found is in getting everyone to a common goal of success in an EMR implementation is listening, giving them an opportunity to speak their mind, looking at their workflow, going to their clinic, seeing how they actually take care of real patients. This makes a big difference. We have found primarily that workflow practice sessions were some of the biggest winners as far as getting clinics ready for implementations. You can't do it all yourself. There has to be, as I mentioned, a team approach. Uh, clinical informatics group in a big implementation is critical. And our group is spectacular. They work, seems like, 28 hours a day. And they have been really the reason that we've been successful thus far because they spent hundreds of hours of time with the users, with the nurses, with the providers. Um, they wish they could have spent more with some providers that were in denial a little bit, but that, that team approach with um, a, a clinical team combined with an IT team as well really is the, is the bridge that makes this work. Our, our workflow sessions involve sometimes real patients, maybe the last patient of the day who is agreeable to allowing the physician, the nurse, to sit down at the computer, see what the workflow from the time the patient checks in, getting them in the system, taking their vital signs, submitting them electronically, bringing them back to the room, uh, opening up the electronic chart in the computer for the doctor to see, and seeing really how we would do a note, how we would do an order, how we would send their medications to the pharmacy. Uh, and that, it, to, to physicians and providers that have not ever worked in a system, they just don't know how that looks. They don't know what they don't know. They've been used to pulling out a prescription pad, handwriting prescriptions, handwriting orders, they're, they're put in by someone else. And so th those workflow sessions are uh, extremely helpful. I think optimization is about how you um, optimize the care environment. So, um, and information management is important to that. So how do you manage the care delivery processes in a more effective, efficient, and safe way that drives quality? Um, and so, driving all of that process change, so bringing information more proactive, proactively to the providers, things like that. So how do you get information instead of it being more of a, of a I got to go pull things and go search for things. 
we know what the nurse needs or the pharmacist needs or the doctor uh, uh, this type needs and that we get them the information to them proactively. If there's information there that they don't even know is important that we, we tell them, we message them, we alert them. Um, and so it's really about process change and efficiency and standardization of process and getting the processes worked out. But our processes are so information dependent to optimize them, it's really, it, it becomes an information management optimization kind of function. Introduction of IT into a practice is a big deal because, again, uh, along this premise that IT is a tool, that's a means to an end, okay, you've got to use the tool right. So really before you just you say, I'm just going to implement IT, I'm going to adopt IT, I'm going to buy a new EHR, you really start, ought to start by thinking about how do I run my practice, okay, and how do I deliver care to my patients, and where do I need information, and when do I need it, and how do I like to get access to it, by the way, uh, in a way that's easier for me than having to flip through a chart or whatever, okay. Then once you understand that reasonably well, and most providers do, they do it on a day-in, day-out basis, okay. Uh, uh, then, then you can start saying, how do I adopt those information tools in a way that makes it better for me, that makes it better for my patients, that makes it better for my office manager, that makes it better for you know, the family members of patients to be able to participate and help support their care. When you talk about small providers adopting, it's hard. It's very challenging. You're a small office. You're really focused on delivering care for your patients. You've got a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders. So it's hard to think about adopting health IT. My message back to those folks is I get it. I agree it's hard. It's really important. It's really important to be able to have these tools at your disposal to deliver great care to your patients. So I know it's hard, but I know you can do it. I have great faith in you. Healthcare quality has many dimensions, as the definition from the Institute of Medicine illustrates. EHRs can improve quality, but this improvement may not happen automatically. EHRs can improve quality by making the information accessible and by providing reminders to clinicians for such things as proper medication use or ordering preventive screening tests. The data in the EHR can be used to document both the process of care, that is, those things that a healthcare provider does, and the outcomes, that is, what happens to the patient. Many processes that were developed when we had paper charts will not work as well when we implement electronic health records. We need to rethink and redesign our processes. These changes require involvement of the whole team, not just the clinicians, but office staff and even patients. Although it is a challenge to redesign work processes, the rewards are that we can finally begin to deliver health care that meets the IOM's high standards for quality, efficiency, and safety.